I've okay. begun recording. Okay. Oh, I, I've already been recording. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, like, right when I was starting, the silence is already there. I was getting ready to start. <laughs> I open my mouth, and Val just blurts out something. Okay, silence. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna blow a huge fart. <laughs> God, <damn it. laughs> okay. And then I got I, I got nervous and then I just laughed. <laughs> this is the Player Four Podcast. Join us each week as we talk about video games, entertainment, and pop culture, and bring in guests from the Rooster Teeth community. Player Four has entered the game. What's up, what's up, what's up? It's the Player 4 Podcast coming at you live, but not really, because that's next week. But yeah, live, live next week. Live, live, pre-recorded, pre-recorded live, do it in the post. Hello, I am Tristan, a.k.a. Shagrazir, on the Rooster Teeth website. I'm Alex, a.k.a. Chaos Black 21 And I'm Malachi, a.k.a. Sukikiba. Sorry, Alex, you were getting into it, so then I had to get into it. I couldn't help myself. We're missing That's... somebody. Joseph. Joseph. He, he is feeling the Dookie mood. <laughs> he has turned into the Dookie, Kiba. He is the Dukes. So, uh, Duke it's just Christ. us today. We have a list? Read the list. List? There's a list? Do we ever have lists? Tell we, me we have... what's on we the schedule. We didn't have one in 102, but this time we do have one. Apparently, I went to a concert called the BS Concert. I don't know. It's what's on the <laughs> list. And then uh, we're going to just uh, get Alex's first impressions on Andromeda. And then we're going to just uh, mention a few other things after that. And then what's the last thing? What's the last thing, Malachi? That, 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 okay, fine. Blow through it and get the beep out of here. <laughs> I like, I like <laughs> long pause, self censoring. Yeah, I guess that helps with the editing process. You don't have to actually put in a real bleep. <laughs> well, if you're gonna censor yourself, you gotta, you gotta commit to it. You give it just like, and so then he said beep, and then I said you gotta be like, and then he said bleep. <laughs> Nobody is as perfect as the, uh, with the bleep as you are, though. I, oh my goodness. No, you, you gotta think, as I was getting up to that point, and then I had to pause to load the bleep sound and then continue. <laughs> you need to store <laughs> that file closer to the surface, man. Well, it's gotta be, like, on your desktop. It's in my mechanical hard drive, not my, not my, uh, SSD. hard disk, I, yeah. I got you. Alright. I got you back, man. <laughs> no, it's so... on my flop. So it flop. was going to be a short I guess, but now we're doing this. <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, Joseph ain't here, so we're going to just uh, we're gonna we're gonna another two hour podcast. All right, let's do it. Two hours, Malachi. Tell us about BTS. Who the who the bleep are they? See, it's just so, you can't say it like that. You gotta be like, who the bleep are they? <laughs> So this is uh this is mainly for my little sister Kazaya. Uh she's a really good kid, uh smart and she worked really hard and wanted to go to this concert. Um BTS is a seven member South Korean boy band formed by Big Hit Entertainment. Um their the actual translation for their Korean name is actually Bulletproof Boy Scouts. That isn't so. BTS at all. That's now, their abbreviation for their thing. Now because how old are they if they're Boy Scouts? They the band was formed in 2013, so it's only been around for four years. Four year olds being Boy Scouts, I don't know if that <laughs> really works out. No, they're all they're all between like 15 and 18. And no, actually, one's 20. They're they're young, but they're not they're not. Young, young. Ah, but they haven't uh, graduated to Eagle Scouts yet. <laughs> I know nothing of Boy Scouts. I don't know either. I'm really just coming out and coming <laughs> up with this out of ass. Like, <laughs> wow. um, Cub Scouts, then Boy Scouts, then Eagle Scouts. So, Thanks, you're welcome. Um, it was. I was actually. We got decent seats this time. We were in the uh, Prudential Center 
in Newark, New Jersey. Yeah, I was going to say, it wasn't the one near me. Yeah, there's a Prudential there. It's the 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 hockey rink that's there. So they had some. The seating had a lot of multiple tiers, which was nice. Um, versus just like a uh, I don't know, concert hall that just had like one level. I've been in one of the or it. it all in all, I got we got decent seats. We were a bit far away, but we could easily see everything. And they had nice uh, monitors showing close ups of the the singers. Um, and they had some cool things they did in the concert, uh, a lot of, uh, raising and, or platforms that dropped below the stage, so they did a lot of parts where they raised up onto the stage, um, and they also had a sequence to where, uh, it raised, they had, uh, four instrumentalists and the singer in the center, and they raised it up into, like, a pyramid shape and lowered it down. So they did, they did some interesting things. And I actually thought it was really cool. They also had some actual instruments at the concert. Um, it was during one of the solos. I don't remember the the singer that did it, which is kind of cool is with this band. They each had their group songs they did, and each one had a solo song that they came up with. Oh. And a lot of the – actually, I think all the songs are actually composed and written by the band. Oh, so they so they're actual real artists. Like, they're not artists. Just they actually write their own songs. They're not like, okay, I need this producer to write me a song that I'll think, just sing and make it my own. If I'm not mistaken, I probably am wrong, but if I'm not mistaken, Rap Monster is his stage name. Uh he is the one that does uh the uh the composing. Do they have any pyrotechnics? No. No pyrotechnics. No pyrotechnics. They, I mean, had I was, lots, they had lots of glittery stuff, a lot of, a lot of confetti and streamers. No, if it doesn't blow up, I'm not interested. Oh, or lasers? Well, Did they at least have lasers? <laughs> Must have uh, laser lights. Uh, uh, not, oh not my like, gosh. Oh I'm, I'm my not, goodness. You're, you're talking about the fine laser lights or like beams yeah. of light? No, they're yeah, like the, the same thing. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. What? Wait. What's the difference between vine lasers and beam lasers? Aren't is that? Yeah. Oh. Are you wait? Are you talking about like laser pointers versus beams? No, not laser pointers. That's really well, not laser pointers. The ones that they put the well, yeah. it's the same. It is the same thing. It's but they have a fog machine that catches the beam. Yes. 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 God, yeah. They were just... pumping. They, they were pumping the fog in before the concert. Um. Pump up the fog. <laughs> Pump the, up the volume. The, uh, I was trying to think of the other cool thing they did. Um, Were you surrounded by young girls just screaming uh, their heads off? I was yeah, surrounded by girls. the ceiling. There were girls all over the place. You were like, <laughs> with, their, with, with parents who were probably like, oh my gosh, why? <laughs> why couldn't I have had a son? <laughs> um, oh, there was actually quite a few guys there. I'm probably sorry, a that, couple that sounded a little sexist. I apologize. Proxy by their... People bring them, but anyways. Oh, what did I want to say? What happened by oh, proxy? Some, well, just uh, other guys, probably with their girlfriends or people, whatnot. But yeah. there, there were some that were actual fans that were buying merchandise. Um, the thing I wanted to th- uh, wanted to mention that was kind of cool that the fans did for BTS is someone. It's been done before to where it's like well, my sister called it the Purple Ocean, where uh, all their lights that the the your your stick lights that you could. You buy at the concert. You put a, they put a purple bag over it. But the ones that organized it this at this concert uh, did specific colors for specific sections and actually made like a rainbow uh, in in the in the audience, which is really cool. And the band, of course, while they were doing their little when they stop and talk uh, for a minute and address their fans, uh, they they seen the rainbow and they were pointing, they were saying all the colors and being happy and thank thanking everyone. So. That was pretty cool. I'm sorry. They were, they were pointing at the colors and, and naming them. Yeah, they're saying, "Oh, look, green, red, red, red. blue." Instead of just like pointing out and saying, "Ooh, purple <laughs> everywhere." Yeah. I just well, no, the, I just imagine just... it's like a, a preschool class. I'm like, "Red, <laughs> yay!" <laughs> what oh, color no, no, is no. this? It's green. They purple were just berry. Oh, okay. They were just acknowledging that it was a rainbow, and they thought it was, and being really cool. Blurpleberry is my favorite color. 
Burple Berry. Burple Berry. I, I I do think the audience was giving them a lot of energy because it took them forever to get off the stage at the end of the concert. Encore, encore, encore. Do the red again. Do the red thing. Say say the word blue. Uh, The stadium can hold 18,000 people and uh, the back, like... uh, You only know that because I told you. I also talked with my sister knew it and other people knew it too. I looked it up for you specifically. I didn't know the specific number, but I didn't know the... Yeah, whatever. Uh, anyways, so <laughs> only a small section was blocked off, so there was probably close to about 10,000 people there, uh, a little more than that. So that's, that's pretty good. I mean, I've never heard of this band. Of course, I don't uh, look into kind of the South Korean, Japanese, and all that uh, too much. So that's probably why... But the fact that they're that popular here in the U.S. States, that's, I, that's, I recommend you begin looking into it too much. Uh, the day the day that we went was technically considered the second day because even though it was on Thursday and not Friday, because Friday sold out so quickly that they uh, booked it for Thursday also and sold more tickets. Mm. Well, Tristan, the only stuff I really listen to from over there is like opening and ending songs of anime. Yeah, but those are still <laughs> Japanese bands. Yeah, and I, I, I like those, but I don't go, hmm, I love this song, I'm going to go and look this band up. It, it pretty much ends, begins and ends at opening and ending songs. Hmm. I look them up. I look the crap out of those things up, because I want to know the lyrics so that I can sing them. Well, I can't it's very difficult unless they're going really slow for me to sing Japanese lyrics. <laughs> there's um, there's a couple uh, that I've been trying to do lately, and uh, holy crap with the writing. The, the lyrics are just nuts sometimes. The worst part is that even when I have the lyrics printed in front of me, there's um, uh, there's a couple, I don't know, you'd say rules or conventions to how words are generally pronounced oh. or read through when they're in lyric form. So, like, if they have a doubled consonant in Japanese in them, which, mm-hmm. when it's spoken in the language, usually you, you, there's, like, a small pause in your voice, and then you hit the consonant hard. Like, choto, the Japanese word choto, is C-H-O-T-T-O if you spell it in Roman letters. Um, mm-hmm. And so when you say it, it's choto. Uh, but when it's in a song... It's either going to be said choto with, you know, as part of the lyrics said with the beat, or they're going to break it up and they would say cho oto. Yeah, I, I've, I've uh, noticed that. Like in, they will, they will double the vowel sound that precedes a doubled consonant. And so it's really hard to know until you've listened through the song a few times and get it right where they're doubling their sounds. Um, on those doubled consonant words, which is tough. Well, it's also hard to know if they're going to hold out an O sound, or if they're just going to say O. Oh. Yeah, that could also be just a sense that, like, I know when I was in chorus, you sometimes had to say words uh, differently so that the audience would hear it properly. Mm. Yeah, so there, there's, um, the, the bands that I've been listening to lately have a lot of that going on, where I want to sing the lyrics and I'll get the lyrics in front of me, and I'll start, like, trying to say them along, read them along with the singer, and and I get, like, tripped up when they do or don't hold a word the way I think they will, according to the melody. Mm. Any of that. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's well, t- Mal, I mean, I, I you, you seem to be a pretty good brother if you are bringing your sister to this. This is well, like the second or third time he's done it. Uh, the Hatsune Miku concert was something I kind of wanted to go to, so that's why I really wanted to go that take her to that because I wanted counts. to go. And Still I counts. took I took her to Got Seven. That was specifically for her and BTS. It's her two favorite bands, and they were in the states. And she she's a straight A student. She's you know she's very artistic. She's uh, a nice kid. She's not. She she works hard, so I felt that, you know, and her dad doesn't do anything for her, and, you know, mom can only do so much. So, yeah. Good job, Mal. 
He gets you win, big brother sticker. You win the brother trophy. <laughs> you, you don't have any siblings, do you, Alex? I have an older sister. Oh, you have an older sister. I didn't even know that. How long have we been friends? Uh, let's see. We met in 2013, yeah. so that's like four years. Four years. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, just uh, maybe. Maybe. Well, we we were kind of talking to each other around this time uh, in the forums. Yep. Maybe, but yeah, we didn't really know. We, we didn't meet actually until July. In, at RTX. And that's when we so. took our relationship to the next level. Yeah, with the Pillows of Solitude. <laughs> <laughs> we still need to place one exactly between us when we're in our home states. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, should we go yeah. to Andromeda? Tell us about You're... that. You're the one playing it. First impressions? Uh, well, first, I get to tell you how Andromeda... Really uh, screwed up for me at the beginning. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, don't worry. I love the game, but uh, something I, I don't know what happened. But when I first installed the game, I went over to my friend's house because he has good internet, and I wanted to install the update. Not to mention, I had an Xbox update I had to install. So install the Xbox update. Start installing the game. We went away while the game installed. <clears throat> When I got back, the game was installed. I was like, okay. And the updates were all put in. I go to play it, I think, the next night. And I uh, I get pretty far. Uh, I get to a point where I start. you do start doing a lot of talking to people. Because that's a big part of Mass Effect. And all of a sudden, after I made one of my uh, choices for like what I wanted to respond with, the audio for the dialogue just went, just crapped out. Oh. And it went every, just everything was silent. And not only that, but uh, each response seemed to take forever to happen. Um, but somehow I would get through a dialogue, and so then I'd go to do the next thing. Well, then the next dialogue that I would go into, the audio would still be gone. Mm. And then... I would try to go into a door and all of a sudden it would freeze. And like my character would literally freeze, but I could still pan the camera around and go into the options, but I could not move. (laughs) So So, the game wasn't frozen, but it wasn't loading the next area up either. Yeah. So at this point I was like, okay, so either my disc is screwed up or the install was wrong. So I decided to obviously uninstall and reinstall first before I would have to take it back and exchange it. Yeah. Uh, Did that a couple days ago, reinstalled it. I haven't gotten the updates for it because I haven't connected online. Uh, But... So far, it looks like it has installed properly. So I think just something happened during the install that really screwed it up. Did you restart your system after the system update? Uh, it's supposed to restart like during slash after the update for your system. Like it even says like your Xbox may restart during. Yeah, uh, well, even the PlayStation, it still it, it restarts and then it installs and then it goes to the screen. So I, I mean, I kind of have to uh, restart it because I turned it. I had to turn it off and take it away from my friend's house and bring it back to my house. Yeah. Well, no, I was just yeah, I was just wondering because you did both at the same time. Like I don't know if it was just being dumb. I don't know. Um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, we'll see. Uh, I may or may not get the updates uh, for the game itself. I haven't encountered any of the animation issue- issues that people were uh, completely just throwing tantrums about. So I don't really understand the problem with that. Um, but overall, game-wise... I'm loving it. It, it is definitely... It's, it, <laughs> I'm loving it! <laughs> uh, it's a Mass Effect game, which I love Mass Effect series, the series. Uh, 
if you like the Mass Effect series, I know Tristan hasn't played any of them. <laughs> I have. Uh, yeah. um, you have them. You've never played them. I think earlier, like way back in the beginning of the podcast, when we started podcasting, you're like, oh yeah, I have them. I'll, I'll play them. And then you still have it. Yeah. That is that is so me. Joseph, Joseph said I should have gotten them and then persuaded Tristan to play along with me. Um, I mean, my yeah, problem, I wish Joseph was here. My problem is that, like, I, I will, like, I will, if I get on my computer and somebody's online and is like, let's play a game, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna go play a multiplayer game with this person. Like, and not play a single player game. Not because but I don't like this. You can play game. multiplayer in Mass Effect. Just not campaign. Yeah, so I wouldn't get through the campaign ever. (laughs) (laughs) Just would play the game, just not the campaign. Um, but so I like the battle system, like the like engaging enemies, uh, combat. I I do like that. It's it feels pretty much like the old mess, like Mass Effect Three at least. Seems pretty one for one. Um, yeah, I think there there's probably a few changes here and there, um, but overall, it's very. Uh, it reminds me of a Mass Effect combat system. Okay. Uh, dialogue, uh, they've changed it a little bit. Like the basics are still there, but they changed it in a way that you really don't have um, good or like evil. In a sense, answers. Oh, you can't do Paragon versus Renegade anymore. No, and I believe that they explained why uh, they went that way. Uh, I just don't have the article with me. Well, but I mean, like your chosen answers still affect things. It just doesn't. Yeah, you don't get a meter, so it still could be like a bad guy answer. It just you don't have a meter to indicate that you did a bad guy thing. Well, yeah, and there there are answers where like. Uh, I I just recently was talking to some guy who was uh, pissed at something, and you could either have, like, this decent answer, or you could have this answer that basically is sarcastic as hell towards him. And I, of course, did the sarcastic as hell <laughs> towards him. Because you're an asshole. Yeah, that would well, that'd, that'd be an Alex answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even though I try to play Paragon, I do sometimes like to give the asshole answers. Mm-hmm. Uh, but and he and he uh, responded in a way. He's like, "Oh wait, you are being sarcastic, you asshole." <laughs> he's like, "Oh no, I've been found out." <laughs> uh, but yeah, you don't have the Paragon and Renegade paths anymore. Hmm. Uh, I've been also contemplating who I'm going to romance. And told you it's the guy, the first guy you run into, just romance. Him. I was, I was pretty. I'm still kind of pretty set on the one, but the one guy. Or he's, he's pretty hot. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tristan. I'm going for a girl this time. I... Uh, you, you're not going to go for the Balchinian? There, I haven't seen a Balchinian yet. Uh, uh, oh, that's I'm right. I didn't get to epi- I didn't get to be the one to epi- edit the episode with the Balchinian remarks. Please tell me. Don't worry. Yeah, it's in there. <laughs> it's, it's in there. Yeah. Already go Wikipedia watch episode one. What is that? One hundred two. One hundred three. Yeah, one hundred two. One hundred two. Go watch episode one hundred two. It's hilarious. We talked about Balchinians because Men in Black is a funny movie. <laughs> uh, the ship is. I mean, it's like you're playing on Mass Effect three again. Just the ship out. Um, Outline is a little different, like the way the rooms are set up. Isn't there like a severe difference in combat from you know one to three though? Uh, there's a difference in combat. I would say they they really made the combat more fluid and like going from one to three. So one was like the least fluid out so of all. Of them. Most of what I know about it is you know just hearsay. What I've been told by players of it who enjoyed it. And one thing I didn't understand was that one person who explained it to me said that one of, like, the big um, results, I guess I would say, of the Mass Effect was that you didn't need ammo. There was just infinite bullets inside of guns now or whatever. And so there wasn't an ammo system in the first game, but then there was in the second game. And I was confused by this statement. Yeah, they... 
it's been a long time since I played the first one, but I do remember that there really wasn't ammo in a sense. Uh, it still could overheat. Uh, the guns could overheat. Uh, in the second one, they did introduce ammo. There's still a- they kept going with the ammo through up through Andromeda. So you do have to watch your watch your shots and if you run out of ammo. But at the same time, pretty much every encounter area that you come across, they're like, "Oh, you used all this ammo. Here's more ammo." <laughs> So you, so you never really run out unless you're such a terrible shot that you just use all that up, find the ammo supply, and then use up all the ammo supply to kill the rest of the things. The ammo supply also isn't infinite? No, it is not. They have only a certain amount uh, that you can supply yourself with. I think you can supply like four times after that. Uh, but I've never actually gone through a full ammo supply either. Yeah. Sounds like that'd be tough, because, what, you you run out of ammo, you hit the ammo supply, that fully refills you? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, and then, but, uh, so, the, one, like I said, wasn't as fluid. Uh, they, now, all the way here through Andromeda, and three even, like, they made it so fluid, like, being able to use your powers while in combat. Like, while you're shooting, you're like, oh, I want to use this power, and so you use it. It's so much easier now than in the first game. And in the first game, there was a whole lot of different, like, crafting. And in Andromeda, they've kind of added it back a little bit with these mods that you can put on your armor and your guns and also crafting, like, like building weapons from blueprints. But it's not as deep as Mass Effect 1 was. Mm. So, would you? Is there a reason to ever switch away from the first weapon they give you? Like, do you have like have to if you don't want to? Yes. Die. Uh, there, there is. You want to get better guns. Um, I've already gotten. I've already built myself a better shotgun than uh, what they gave me, uh, and I'm in the process of building a sniper rifle that's better than what they gave me. Ah. Uh, but each each gun now. Uh, has different tiers that you uh, have to uh, basically research and build. So um, the sniper rifle that I have pretty much has five levels that it can build uh, build up into that I have to do as I level up. You can't get them until you reach a certain level. Oh, okay. So that's kind of the crafting part of it. Uh, but it's like I said, it's not as confusing as the Mass Effect 1 Mass crafting Mass was. Mass Effect 1 was a little not straight yeah. forward. Yeah. Okay. So that's, uh... So wait, that's, wait that's, no, that's... No, I do have one more question. Okay. Who do you freaking play as? Because it's not Shepard this time, right? No. You play as a... Uh, either a male or a female, uh, again, but it's... Uh, their name is Ryder. That's their last name. Obviously, you can change their first name to whatever you want. Um, you I think Shepherd Rider. <laughs> I, I think the male, if you just go with just the generic male, his name is Scott Rider. Uh, I don't know what the female's name is, uh, but whoever you choose, then the other gender then is your twin, essentially, and. Uh, they end up playing a part in the game. So, you have a twin sister. Your mother was wise to hide her from me. Yeah, and so because I took so much time uh, on the, my first attempt when my game was corrupted uh, to like model my sister somewhat so that we both kind of look similar, like in a sense, at least hair-wise and all that, and then by the time that I got the game to work properly, I was like, screw it. And so I made my <laughs> character, and I just left her the generic version. I do not care you. anymore. So, so yeah. I have blonde hair, and she has, like, dark brunette hair. I'm like, yeah, this definitely yeah, we're looks... <laughs> I just, you know, I got a... I bleached my hair blonde. Yeah. I couldn't <laughs> convince I hate her my to sister. do the same. She hates me, and that's why I hate Krimis. Yeah, and the game is about uh, trying to carve 
a spot for you in uh, not not just for humans, but just for uh, basically all the species that are in the Milky Way galaxy into this new Andromeda galaxy. I see. Mass Effect Andromeda galaxy. Yeah. Mass so I I give it two thumbsticks. Two thumbsticks. Even, even even with the bad install, because that's not really uh, Bioware's fault. That was just my Xbox for some reason being a dumbass. Two thumbsticks, completely sideways. <laughs> up, up, down, down, <laughs> left, right, left, right. BA start select. And then when that Joseph unlocks. is with us, maybe we can go into more details. Details like uh, I like how we always say we're going to make this a short podcast. It never is. I know. Uh, I I kept talking. I'm sorry. All right. So the last thing to know before we sign out is that next week is the live stream. Of course, it doesn't help me. This week is the live stream. <laughs> Gosh darn! We can't even like uh, depending pre-announce on it. when this comes out. This the, the live stream might be happening. At the this same week, time, or, or you know, the ha- live stream might happen before this thing comes out, because that's how awesome we are. Anyway, uh, you know, first Wednesday, first Wednesday of each month. Yeah, first Wednesday of each yes. month. Podcast, Maybe. live stream, be there. We're going to have guests, and I know one of them's in Norwegia, and he's one of the players yeah. for D&D. He's excited. So, we'll see you there. Thank you for being here. Have a good night. Don't forget, uh, even though it's going to pass before this comes out, but this week, um, a couple days after we record, is Rooster T's birthday as well. Ooh, Rooster birthday! Yeah. April oh, 1st! April Fool's yes. Day. It's not a joke, though. In my... Uh, is this going to be my fourth or fifth year anniversary? Uh, like, I think three days later. Anniversary? Yeah, my Rooster Teeth anniversary. You've my got Rooster a girlfriend. Verse. Your your girlfriend's name is Rooster Teeth. Yeah, well, that's amazing. Maybe we should uh, mention some I've fun loved her facts so long. about. <laughs> Maybe we should mention some fun facts about the found how Rooster Teeth got started and all that kind of as a reminder to everyone out there. Yeah, we should do that on the live stream for now. Hashtag goodbye. Good night. Goodbye. <laughs>